What's up, everyone, and welcome to the RRBG podcast. In this episode, I talked to Pat McCrory of the band Turnstile. I've been jamming Turnstile's Glow On now for almost a year. It's it's my album of the year, uh, aside from the Every Time I Die album. We get into that a little bit. We get to the writing of that album. We get to them playing shows. We also talk a lot about wrestling and video games. It was a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoy it. Please make sure to check out Turnstile. Pick up the album Glow On. Follow them on social media at Turnstile Love Connection. Follow Pat at PatWK on IG. Push the little subscribe button and the heart and the bell and everything. Help us out. Get us on that algorithm. And check out our Patreon page. Go to patreon.com slash RRBG and support the podcast. Cheers. I'm also just looking at my phone. My friend just sent me this kfc fried chicken fleshlight oh <laughs> that's not appetizing man Look oh at, god and like hold on so that everyone can see what i'm talking about there's the hole oh dude yeah it looks like peanut butter <laughs> who wants to fuck fried chicken all right anyway um <laughs> make it popeyes you know what i mean oh my god. damn Oh my goodness. Anyway, what's up everyone? Welcome to the RRBG <laughs> podcast. I'm here with Pat McCrory. Did I say that right? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Pat McCrory of Turnstile. How you doing? Chilling, man. Feeling good. How about you? Great. I'm feeling great. Uh, you must be feeling awesome, man. You know, the band has been blowing up. You've blown up. Yeah, it's been pretty wild recently, <laughs> but it's cool. It's it's fun. Very fun. You know? Yeah. I mean, I've seen a lot of television appearances. I feel like that would be a little awkward for me. But, I mean, I don't, I don't know. How would you feel about it? Like, I you... mean, it, it's definitely, like, one of those things that you, I, I, like, couldn't, you know, grasp what I was doing until, you know, it was done. Mm. But they are both, like, pretty different and, and at the same time pretty cool just because it's, like, you, you know, we – no one's used to getting pampered sometimes. And that was like, I felt like I was getting pampered for like a couple hours. And I was like, yeah, they put makeup on me, dude. Like, is there <laughs> like, can I get a water? And someone there's a water. And I'm like, Oh shit, mm -hmm. man. It's the best water too. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Fancy shit. Fancy shit. Um, that's cool though, man. I can imagine. I mean, I like the Kimmel setup because Kimmel kind of just has a stage. It, it just feels, yeah. like, it feels like a show. Yeah, the Kimmel one definitely was like, you know, it was the second one we did. So I definitely wasn't as stressed, I guess, in a way or just nervous. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was also like, you know, the way they shoot those things is, you know, way earlier in the day now. And uh, like mm -hmm. Kimmel's was pre-recorded before the show even happened. So it was like, hey, do your set whenever you guys you can play the main song and then do a few other songs for the YouTube stuff. And yeah, just whenever you're ready. And we were like, Oh, like we don't have to go like right now. Cause Seth, Seth Myers was like, all right guys at four o'clock, the show starts. Right. Yeah. And at four twenty, Marissa Tomei goes off stage <laughs> and then Matthew McConaughey comes on at four twenty two, And we're like, okay. And we have to be like, that's let's nuts. go. <laughs> yeah. So very like, Oh, yeah, it's very time crunch. I, every time it's I seen well like the Seth Meyers one and the other like the older ones where they're performing in the studio or like you know in front of that live audience. Yeah, it always feels a little weird, you know. From I get it, it's exciting, but it's still it's got to be like you know like nerve wracking because the, the situation like you're explaining the the time constraints and everything. Yeah, it it definitely like seth meyers specifically like the crowd was like 40 feet away and <laughs> you're like you know especially your you type know. of music which is you know the the hardcore yeah. type of music is very much a live situation where you know people are right up front and there's a lot of 100 crowd surfing a lot of moshing so yeah it's like you feed you know the energy is like shared so like the kimmel set sorry the kimmel set was like they had about 35 people and we, we could invite some friends, but like, you know, our friends are in our, their thirties. Now they're not like necessarily about to go up front and be like, yeah, yeah. start a circle. But <laughs> yeah. The other people that came were like, you can get free tickets. You just like go and enter the yeah. drawing or something. And like the front 
12 or 15 people were at both LA shows. So I was like, oh, I saw you like the last three days in a row. That's like, awesome. What's up again? You know? <laughs> so it was really cool to have like familiarity, but then also know it's like, these are our, this is like our crowd here with us, you know? Yeah, for sure. That's good. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I keep, uh, you know, I'm, I want to be honest with you. Like I had heard of the band before, uh, mm -hmm. you know, when you guys were touring with like every time I die and stuff like that. Yeah. And I saw you guys on that tour, but I didn't know you guys at all. I just like, Oh, it's cool. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And hardcore band, you know, sounds good. And then glow on came out and it was like the, the music kind of it took a turn a little bit in a, in a positive way. Like it's a lot more experimental. There's a lot more different elements to it than just like straight up hardcore yeah and uh it blew it blew up and I, I every time like oh i'm gonna buy that record on vinyl because i really enjoy it sold out and it's like two thousand dollars on ebay i'm like what the fuck <laughs> yeah I, I think like you know very specifically with vinyl and stuff nowadays it's like people have kind of like cornered this way to like and it's not necessarily like exclusively how the buyers do because a record drops you know what i mean mm -hmm. things are like a drop nowadays and it's like if you aren't in when it's getting yeah who knows like and especially in a world where everybody's like the resale of everything now is yeah. like you hang on to shit because you're like hmm yeah what if what if i can make 30 bucks on this you know what i mean sure and like the buy for stuff when things are a drop is just like blind just like i got three I'm, i got them now you know yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah. Either way, that is really sick because then we're like, oh, wow. Because coming out of the pandemic and stuff, we didn't know if people wanted live. You know, yeah, obviously yeah. you think people want it, the world to go back to normal, but you don't know how shows are going to be. You don't know how the new music's going to be received. And it, it definitely is awesome to see because it made it affirmed what we thought. We were like, oh, we got We feel really happy with this record. So, yeah. Yeah. No, I could, you could tell, man. I mean, it really clicked with me. I, I've still to this day, I'm listening to it at least once a week when I'm yeah, dri right. when I'm driving around, you know, because it, it made me feel things that I wasn't, I hadn't felt in a long time. You know, I was getting really dark. I was listening to a lot of death metal and stuff from mm -hmm. you know Sweden, and and the heavier the better, and like yeah, you know, yeah, and like super low growls. I'm like, oh, this is cool. And then like I started noticing that a lot of things were happening in the world too. And that, like, I was surrounding myself with just just heaviness, which is not yeah, always yeah. greatness, you know. Uh, and then when I heard this, it made me happy. It made me feel like young, you know. Like, Dang. <laughs> it yeah, gave, it gave me energy. It was great. It, it's kind of like you know when it, it's like that thing. It's like when you're sad, you can you kind of only feel better by like seeing something that's familiar and being like this is also sad music this makes me feel like i'm allowed to feel this way mm -hmm. and it's all good and like when heavy things are happening heavy ass music is like right there with you to be like yeah this is like the only way to get kind out. of you yeah. know relate my feelings to the world and like when we recorded the record it was definitely like kind of that not heavy but but like the opposite we were all kind of in like a really comfy place together nice. uh the the actual physical place we were was like super comfortable and we were all like damn well this is and like coming out of it you just want people to feel what you felt when you made something you know mm. or be able to attach to it so it's cool to hear that because like you know some of the songs aren't happy songs but if they give you like something to grab onto and be like this is I'm with that. Like, yeah. I can relate to this, and now it's a part of how I'm feeling. That's sick. Yeah, man. Yeah, and it goes, you know, also you can tell by the the artwork and kind of just the aesthetics of the whole thing. You know, it makes you – it's more uplifting than, like, straight-up hardcore, which is usually associated with, like, violence or yeah, you know, yeah. anger. And in a positive anger, it's a positive – but you're angry at the world or whatever, and you're letting it out in the pit. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. And this is more like it's, it's some of the songs are incredibly heavy. I'm not, you know, knocking that that it's like not. Mm. It's just that my my heart loves to race to the that that thrashy beat that uh the punk that punky thrashy beat. Yeah. That that I I love that. So it it makes me feel good, and that's I think what you guys are trying to do, which I love. You know. Yeah, it's just, it, it's kind of about pleasing. We got to please ourselves first, you know, and we're like, what what gets us excited? And 
it, hardcore will always be exciting. And every now and then we're like, dang, it's really exciting to like drop it low and just be like, Phew. yeah, you yeah. know, just kind of simmer and things. So yeah, cause that, there's a, that's there's, definitely, there's a, there's a thing that I, that's a conversation piece I've always had, which is, you know, when, when we grow up, when we're younger, like we're, we have more energy. We're a little more angsty. We're a little more aggressive. We are, we have things to be mad about, but as we get older yeah. and we figure life out, you know, you, you're doing well, you have a good relationship or, friends or you know a little bit of money that so you're not like check to check or whatever right what do you write about then and i think you guys figured it out you know what i mean yeah i mean like uh obviously you'll always have you know in in any like i, I feel like in any like artistic in any expressive form you're gonna be like bouncing off of your direct you know your circle and whatever you're feeling and some of those things are way more inspiring than the others. Yeah. And uh, in the end, it's just like about how, cause like how many fucking songs have we heard that are like talking about the same shit? You know, we've heard so many songs that are like angry at the exact same thing, but right. it's like the yeah. delivery of said anger or happiness or anything is like, however the, however it's released and then received is like what, what counts the most, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah. You, you guys killed it. I'm telling you, it was my album of the year. So I, I Oh damn. Thank I, you, man. I love it. Love it. Uh, it was tied up in first place with the, the, every time I die, uh, release, but then they broke up dude. And, yeah, it's uh, a shame. really sad. And so yeah. I, I, you know, you're disqualified from album. Of the year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, it's, pull, it's plugged away. I was plugged it away from you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Those are good dudes, though. No, I love all of those dudes, yeah. and it's real unfortunate what's happening. And I hope they figure mm -hmm. it out. You know, and I've For had sure. you know people reach out to me because they know I know the guys, and I'm just like, I don't know anything, man. I don't live in Buffalo. You know what I mean? I hang yeah. out when they come to LA, and that's it. Like, <laughs> right? I don't know their beef. I don't know the problem. So yeah, exactly. I you know I'm like. Love you guys. Here you go. You know, but it's something who no one's going to know the yeah. insides on anything, you know? Well, let, let's use this segue of, uh, we're talking about music. We're then talking about music with a wrestler. Uh, we're also talking about the breakup of that band, which is sad. And so we will talk about the sadness of wrestling, which is Dude. Scott Hall. Yeah, man. I've been watching videos like all day. Yeah. It's unfortunate, it's man. <laughs> Because, I mean, he just passed, what, what like two hours ago, three hours ago, maybe? Yep. yep. And, but, it, and the situation you know. is what sucks. You know, that he yeah. he fixed his life. He gave up alcohol and drugs, got back on his feet and decided, okay, I'm going to fix my hips so I don't have to walk with a limp anymore and then get yep. three heart attacks. Like, what? <laughs> brutal. Oh, Very brutal. Geez. I mean, yeah, I was, uh, you know, it's cool because at the very least, you know, it's like, you see him not, su you know, a per any person that you admire or you loved in their prime of whatever you can consider their prime. Mm -hmm. It's like to see a person come back up, yeah. no matter how long they were up. The fact that he was back up was like so cool. Yeah. Like I was just five minutes ago, not five, but, you know, earlier today, I was just like, blabbing off to my girlfriend i'm like yeah he was so cool like look how cool is i ha i had this purple outfit like when i was a kid he was so sick and he like had addiction problems and then like he got better and look at him this is a pic and i was like just she just never heard of him in her life but i'm still like <laughs> god he was such like, a cool dude it's yeah. so cool to like reminisce you know yeah 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 absolutely i mean to me it meant a lot because uh you know any i found out later that he wasn't actually cuban but yeah but when i was a kid it was like wow there's a cuban wrestler that's sick yeah. that's super sick i'm being like represent i felt represented like a there you know like this is that's my guy it has to be my guy you know some for some people, it was whatever, you know, Eddie Guerrero or because of the Mexicans or whatever. But mm -hmm. Razor Ramon was my dude. Right. And even then later when I got older, I'm like, I don't care. Whatever. At least he was representing, you know, and yeah, uh, whatever. I know that people, some people was a cultural appropriation, whatever. I, that doesn't bother me at all. Uh, yeah. I mean, and then he went what? off to become the out, you know, the outsiders. I, I connected with that because I always felt that way. I'm an outsider, oh, yeah. you know, <laughs> like the. It's it's funny because you know wrestling is like 
it, it's especially when you look at that era of stuff where you can just you look at him and you're like, oh, Scarface. Right. Yeah. The music, Sick. everything. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But it takes on like such a more profound grasp because it's like put into these stories. It gives a new life to like little characters like that. You're like, oh, Sting, the crow. Okay. Yeah. But it's like, like it, it, it grabs onto so much more of like actual reality, even though it's a, a wrestling show. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I mean, like, that, that's what they're, that's what good wrestling is. If you can grab reality and take it to the next level as entertainment for someone like that's yeah. that's what matters people want you it to be real but we don't want you to get really hurt like yeah nobody yeah. really wants to see you get hurt but we want to see you know the enactment of violence <laughs> right yeah like yeah. the what's big e like the dude just oh, got yeah. terrible just fractured his his neck he's seems to be all right but still, it's like you don't want to remember that this dude's name is not Big E. You don't want to think about – and for so long, dudes like Scott Hall and, and Kevin Nash and these guys make you forget that they're real people. You know what I mean? Because you're mm -hmm. so engrossed in it. And now, obviously, wrestling is like way, way different. Yeah. And But it kind of – it still has the same type of grasp where you're like, I know this is this dude's real name. And I know that like they're bringing elements of – you know, them as a person into this wrestling persona that they have, mm. but I'm invested in the character and the person now. Yeah. And that kind of like the wall breaking down a little bit makes it just interesting in a new way. But back then it was like completely engrossed in the character. Yeah. Yeah. You, well, like people like the undertaker who would never break character, you know? No. Yeah. And now he breaks character and you're like, <sighs> You know, stop doing interviews. I'm just kidding. Yeah, just, yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> stop ruining it. No, uh, <laughs> it's it's cool. I hear what you're saying. It makes me feel like um, what's happening with me. What, what got me into wrestling again was that uh, I went to a local indie show, and I got I got you know engrossed in like the whole scene and like I met some of the people, some of the workers, and and getting yeah. to know them and going out and having a couple drinks with them and like you know it was it was like we became friendly and then watching them succeed and then go up and go to nxt or something or, yeah. go, or end up in AEW. now i'm like super invested i'm like fuck yeah it's the homie you know yeah yeah that's yeah. like I, I i had taken a break and i'm definitely not as dug in as i once was but uh you know just recently with nate from or brody king coming in oh yeah yeah, yeah. into aew don't like, use his shoot name how dare you yeah <laughs> <laughs> when he popped in because yeah. like years ago i saw it and i was like dang that's really sick when he got in ring of honor i was like yo oh my god that's fucking amazing yeah and then he got a toy yeah <laughs> talking to him I, he came to one of our shows in in the fall and i was like yeah you got what's up ring, <laughs> i know what's happening with ring of honor are you going and he was like and he like you know obviously you want to like keep that stuff like super close but i was like i know he's i know you're gonna end up there man and it was like as soon as he can and, and uh uh malachi black that you know he's been coming out to hardcore songs for fucking years yeah and yeah. he's like you know he's embedded so it was like damn like i know you're in and then once he came out i was like all right let's fucking go and i've just been keeping my ear to it like definitely read about wrestling every day don't watch the full program every night, but okay. You yeah, you I can watch you can in. watch the the highlights. Some of the stuff, you know, you got to see what's worth watching cuz yeah. you're busy and you can't watch all of it. I watched way too much of it. Like I I think I throw it on while I'm working, so I just yeah. it's always on and I just keep an eye on it and I have a show that it's just about wrestling, so I have to Oh shit. I must have knowledge. Yeah, you need it. It's part of the job. Yeah, but it, it you know, like I, I know Brody and Malachi were doing the PWG in LA, uh, mm -hmm. and they were the Knights of the Black Throne or whatever here yeah. first. So when the whole thing went down, I just congratulated him. I just sent him a, like, "Congrats, man!" and hadn't even been announced yet. I'm like, "Congrats! I know what's up." <laughs> yeah, come on. It was. Sick, this dude. is absolutely happening. Uh, but yeah, wrestling is at a good point right now. There's just a lot of cool shit happening and, and aew uh, also wrestlemania season is upon us you know yeah i feel like wrestling has like an eight year like 
uh, there's like a cycle that happens like every like eight years or so. And I'm definitely like, this is definitely just from my perspective, but you know, coming out of attitude era, I took a break as like a growing boy. I was like fucking 14 and I was like, all right, dude, I can't buy these action figures anymore. I gotta, <laughs> I want to skateboard and play in bands. I can't just be, and like was thinking in other ways, you know? Right. right. And then, anything I would see in between, even though apparently like 2000, you know, those mid 2000s years were cool. Like looking back and edge wasn't my guy, but seeing that those dudes were the top guys, I was like, dang, all right, cool. Yeah. But the cycle of when, you know, the CM punks and Daniel Bryan's kind of popped up and kind of basically just reshaped what it was. And it's just like a nice reshaping. And then that kind of slows down once those dudes start you know, between injuries and retirements and whatever. Yeah, yeah. It kind of teeters off. And then now with AEW, another reshaping, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's like, it gets me back like every eight years. Because when in like 2013 or something, I came back like hard, <laughs> super, way too hard. Like, all of Instagram was like wrestlers. I was just following everybody like, damn, that's cool that he eats chicken nuggets too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I missed, I missed the whole uh, CM Punk thing in WWE. I didn't watch any yeah. of that stuff. I also took a break, you know, and, and took a whole eight or nine years off where I was just touring as well. And, and, mm -hmm. You know, meeting girls and just being too busy, you know? <laughs> yeah, I literally, I remember the day when I was like, I need to chill from wrestling because I went to the mall. I think I was like, must have been sixth or seventh grade, but I went to the mall with my mom. And even at that point, it's like, can't be seen at the mall with your mom. And it was like a weekday. <laughs> and we went and it was like right around my birthday. And she was like, do you want something? Like, we'll go to the toy store and you want to get something? And I was like... Ugh, man all right yeah fuck it i'll go went into the toy store bought a ring like my mom got the the little ring with the the little elastic ropes around really? it nice yeah and i was like and i got my like maybe one or two action figures with it and i was like dang sick birthday walk out of the the store straight up middle school crush outside the store and she was like oh cool what'd you get and i was like Oh my god! <laughs> and I just was like, I was like, ah, oh, it's a gift. It's a gift. And I couldn't even bring myself to tell her. You know what I mean? Right. I was like, no, I'm such a fucking nerd. Oh, dude. <laughs> I remembered like, went home and I like opened the ring up. Might have played with it like once. Like, t take two years off that. I would have been throwing shit off the roof under the ring, like going crazy. Right. But I remember, I was like, I can't do this, man. I can't do this. <laughs> Well, you know, I one thing I figured out after years of uh, dealing with that kind of thing, which, you know, it's interesting. I want to talk to you about that kind of, you know, that mentality that we take on that, you know, we shouldn't do certain things to appease someone else, you know, when you're at that age because you're trying to, you know, get, in, get involved with someone. So you, yeah. you just don't bring it up. You're like, oh, you know, that's nerdy. I don't want to bring it up. I want to be cool for this person, you know. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's, it's so weird. Like I did that for so many years until finally met my wife now. And you know, when I would bring stuff up, she, it would, she would react positively. So yeah, like, like yeah, you know, I used to watch wrestling. Oh, that's cool. I'm like, really? <laughs> yeah. I like playing, you know, video games too. She's like, oh, me too. I love it. It's like, oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, all right, wait, there's, this oh, can all right. happen. All right. Like my opposite, the, <laughs> My partner doesn't have to be the opposite of me. Okay. I don't have to like hide because I, I, it's like a thing. If, you know, you know, my girlfriend, she's super passionate about plenty of other things that I'm like, I don't know what that is, Yeah. yeah. but their passion makes me be like, oh, then, it, then it's cool. And I think like, like I was saying earlier, me like fanning out about razor ramon all day mm -hmm. like showing her videos of a guy she's doesn't you know sad that he's passed in her eyes but like never had any attachment to him mm -hmm. she's seeing that i'm excited therefore excited with me and like that's you know a beautiful thing because you're like oh i can literally just be exactly who, who you want i am be. yeah yeah no filters but it, it's a necessary thing i feel when you connect with people you know what i mean like if you go up to a guy and you see somebody wearing like the you know a shirt that you're like 
Yeah. I know, I, I know that dude. You know what I mean? And there, yeah. there's a dude wearing a fucking, a normal looking person wearing like a John Cena shirt or something in 2022. You're like, oh damn, all right, yeah. well, doing his thing. Let's go. Like there's, that's exactly. It, it's what a it conversation starter. You know what I yeah. mean? Like if, and, oh yeah, and it can go deep. Like if you see someone uh, out with an NWO shirt or a Bullet Club shirt, you know that if you throw up the two sweet, you're gonna get it back. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And you're already now you're friends. You're already like, hey, we know what we're going to talk about for the next 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> um, like yeah. some people, it's kind of just ingrained in them, like it's very specifically wrestling. But like it, it's, it's so funny when you talk to I don't know if you know. Do you know any of the people in Code Orange? Uh, I've met uh, Dom. 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 Yeah. 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 I met him. Sick. Yeah. I met him. We, when, we hung out a, a while. It, it's so sick. Like when you talk with them, it's like yeah man like we were gonna do this show but they you know i i didn't i wanted us to go over better with the crowd and like you know it, 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 they were like marking out for like the other bands and i knew that we could get over with them but like i wasn't gonna sell this shit and i didn't want to say and i'm like holy <laughs> shit wrestling is so deep in your blood like yeah. every uh, like the sentence is that we can float back together i'm like man we're like yeah wrestling fans right here <laughs> <laughs> yeah when you start speaking the 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 lingo the carny talk then that's yeah. when you know you're in like and i right. and I, I gotta I sometimes explain myself with with people when i say it because i hang out with like people like comedians or something and they have no idea what i'm talking about when i say oh the crowd you know you were over with the crowd they're like what i'm like yeah uh they like you <laughs> right and you're like yeah and you try to explain it yeah i'm trying to go o like getting over like yeah. and they're like i don't it doesn't correlate and you're like it's good it's a good thing be it's positive thing. about it yeah yeah Just hear me <laughs> out but you know it's one thing it seems like a culty thing or like a small audience thing or maybe like yeah you know you don't know a lot of people that like wrestling but every, i point this out sometimes where whenever they're on tv whichever company it is it's the number one trending thing on social media. Yeah, dude. It's so the they fan obviously bases are massive. You know, they're obviously generating some kind of attention. Right, and it's not just like uh, you can't like uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You can't just equate it to like a, a gimmick. It can't just be like, oh, let's kids watch it. That's where the numbers are coming from. Right. Yeah. No. Because the demographic is just like absurd. Mm -hmm. So it's just, and it's funny because. I've forced the other guys in turnstile to go to events with me before because just through, you know, having a song on an NXT show like years ago and mm. me being like, that's fucking sick. You guys don't know. This is sick. We have to go to shows. Like we can, if we can get tickets now, let's get tickets. And yeah. I was like fully on the train trying to get everybody. And it doesn't seem appetizing to a person who's not in, but then you force them to go and their excitement isn't the thing that I'm just excited about because I'm like, damn, this rivalry is so sick. It's going to be cool to see like the culmination of this thing or like this story is like still building. It's so cool to them. I took them to first, I took them to like a elimination chamber or something. Oh, no man. fucking. It was a Punjabi prison match <laughs> right. like four years ago. Right. Was that with Kali? Yes. Oh, no, 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 no. It was, uh, Kali comes Jinder. out at the end of it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. like, yeah. I took them to that, and they were like, "What the?" F like freaking out about that, and I was like, "Yo, this is like the wackest part of this night for me." I'm like, <laughs> I was like, "This, I hate this match." But yeah, yeah. Sure. And they were like, "This is so awesome! Oh my god!" Yeah. And then like, took him to the Royal Rumble once, and it was like, "That's the best." Uh, yeah, I, so I had never fun. been, but I was like popping on every person, like every person that came out. I was like, oh my God, Tori Wilson, <laughs> let's go. And they're like, who's that? And I'm like, Who? uh, is it legend? There's a legend. Look and then, her up if you want. <laughs> right. Like Sin Cara will come out and do a, a flip over the ropes. And they're like, what? Yeah. Oh my God. And I'm like, guys. He does it every week. Uh. Oh, man, you don't get it. But it's like everybody gets their own thing. It's sure. just, you know. No, Same I, thing with a lot of subjective art, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I love taking people that don't like wrestling to a live show. Just, just yeah. it, it completely changes their perspective. Like, they get it's it. Like, it's theater. You have to see right. it live. You know what I mean? Like, Literally. Hamilton, I'm sure, is not as good on Disney Plus as it is in going to Hamilton at, you know, yeah, Broadway. Yeah, exactly. 
So, like once you get it, there's like the, it's also that's I mean very specifically with wrestling, but it's a shared energy like a show. You know what I mean? Like they're performing to make you get excited, you know, to tell you something and to get you involved. You know? Yeah, yeah. You know, I always I, I wonder about that energy like that you're talking about that connection between the performer and the audience that you know you see at a live show and and not just wrestling but music as well. And, you know, that's to me, I've, I've been fortunate to have, I had a job for a while as a state, like a stage hand kind of thing where mm. or stage production, it wasn't stage hand. It was yeah. working with the arena, setting up stages and, you know, lights and running cable. And, and at the end of the night, after all of the work, you know, if you get to be on stage because you're doing show call or whatever, I'm there standing next, like, you know, five feet from Billy Joel. As, oh yeah as an entire stadium is singing his, his song back at him dude and that energy that i was getting i i, I full goosebumps i had I, you know what i mean like it felt mine even though i wasn't performing it was like we built this we made this happen yeah and uh, so i'm gonna take some of that <laughs> yeah yeah it's like you you know no matter the role it's like a, a significance that is you know tangible in different ways like yeah. this isn't your song that's playing but you were there to make this moment happen therefore like we're all collectively in awe of what's going on you know yeah but feeling like some sort of like yeah man i fucking i get it have you felt the energy since you've been back after like the whole lockdown thing is it the same is it stronger or do you feel that it's a little bit milder it's like 50 times stronger. It's so much like I've had this conversation a lot where I think it's just that uh, like being denied that yeah. very specific thing, like going to a show, hearing shit loud, being able to dive off a stage, being able to mosh, being able to dance, like do anything. It was denied for too long. Like, if you hadn't and you know we've seen a lot of it now where sometimes this is some kid's first show or mm -hmm. this is their 20th show but it you take that two years or three years whatever it might be and you don't get it you come back and like your reaction is just so so much stronger like the first show i went to post pandemic like the venue down the street from my house opened up my old roommate's band played this band called End It. And before the pandemic, like no offense to End It here, but they weren't doing the 500 cap room. You know what I mean? Mm. But they played this show and it was fucking sold out to the brim. And like the first note, shit was crazy. Like Goosebumps crazy where I was like, yo, is, this, is End It now the biggest band? What happened? Oh my <laughs> fucking God, that was so cool. Yeah. And we were like all like I remember being there with Brendan who sings in turns out and being like dude what the fuck just happened yeah. that was the craziest set I've seen at Auto Bar the like the venue in so long like not just pandemic but like a decade you know what I mean yeah and then I, I might be mixing time frames up but when we did our first show back it was an outdoor free show and it was just like uh, we got this place that's in one of our videos and we were like, let's do the show there. They don't have power. We had to get like generators and we had to get fucking porta potties and a, a like a permit from the city and everything. It was like this whole process. And like before the first note, I'm like, it's like electric style where you're like, oh man, not only am I nervous, but like I can feel that like the second we're like, Ding, it's about to pop off yeah 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 and like first song we played mystery first time we played it live and first single you know and that comes out and it's like i was like <laughs> trying so hard not to just be like supremely keep emotional. it together yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah. it was like it was that kind of feeling because of the reception and it being all of our friends and peers and a ton of people that we see like all the time that we hadn't seen in years because of the pandemic it was like this whole cathartic experience so i think like the energy is this like cathartic release for everybody now we're like 
you might be going to see your fucking 30th favorite band, but you haven't seen your 30th favorite band in three years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be fun, you yeah. know? Yeah, I just saw Cannibal Corpse last night. Dude. And my goodness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the place was packed to the brim. It was incredibly loud. Everybody was off, you know, moshing and circle pitting for like nonstop. There was no break. Yeah. Even between songs, it was just still going. I'm like, all right. Well, right. Like that, those dudes haven't like everybody at this show, everybody there, they haven't been able to circle pit to fucking cannibal corpse. Yeah. In like too many years, they'd been denied that circle pit. And, you know, they might've gotten into another pit for another fast ass band, but it wasn't the cannibal corpse one. And I'm sure the one that they did before was like, this is awesome. And then you get the cannibal corpse and you're like, I'm back. Yeah. Yeah. All the way. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's weird because, you know, I've been dealing with a lot of mental health and I believe that everyone has during yeah, this, this yeah. time because of that. Because they're being they're denied this release that you said. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, I dealt with it prior to the pandemic uh with my band breaking up for a little bit mm -hmm. and and you know, I, I was I didn't realize it. I before I mean I had depression or whatever you know I'd be sad about things and you know yeah, deaths yeah. and you know my life situation with my family and whatever but it never really get, resulted into like a full on panic attack where like I can't mm -hmm. breathe that kind of thing that started happening after the band breakup yeah and I didn't know why and then like I you know try to psychoanalyze with my wife and everything and just be like what's going on what's missing you know life is actually better the podcast mm -hmm. is doing well we have more money than we used to like we're okay and yeah. and and then I realized like I'm missing that being I miss I miss being on stage and yelling at people yeah <laughs> you know what I, I mean? mean and it's something so simple too yeah. like it, it and you know in the current times it's you know mental health is like super forefront so it's very easy to, for you to read anything about what it feels like or what it's supposed to be or you know the the, the clinical diagnosis of so many things yeah but being ignorant to some of them which we all are ignorant to everyone else's process mm -hmm. is like it'll take time to even be able to like conceptualize what you are experiencing personally like any I, I also experienced like uh, uh, my first like bouts of like true anxiety that I had never experienced before the pandemic. I was like, w you know, going through so many things in my head. And there was moments where I'm like, I need to sprint down the street screaming right now. <laughs> and yeah. like before that, Turnstile and our other band, Angel Dust, had been touring for like five years straight. I hadn't had any time home and then we came home in like september 2019 didn't play any shows until february 2020 and in that gap i was like what am i doing <laughs> am i am i a person what am i do and there just be times when i think about it and it goes too far and i just wake up and it's the first thought and i remember reaching out because i had been, i feel like i had handled it so wrong with friends in the past like my cousin was like so helpful to me in that moment because i'm like yo dude like am i is this what i think it is am i just like experiencing like true anxiety and we i mean, remember like talking to him so much about it and uh because looking back i was like you've been dealing with this and i'm over here like well dude go fucking work out i don't yeah, know yeah you know yeah I mean? like, better and yeah work just out, like dude. handling it <laughs> in the way that i think is appropriate but like it took so much time for me to be like, whoa, all right. You can tell me that what I'm feeling is as simple as being like overly anxious about something and it's, you know, weighing me down. But I need to be able to like take that in, process it in my own way, and then hopefully adjust from there. But that doesn't mean there's like a right answer, wrong answer. And like having gone through that made the pandemic, I think like just so much better for me too you know mm. like you get that real eye-opening thing of what makes you happy or what kind of keeps you moving and uh after that it was like all right if i can handle that hopefully i can handle this but i'm going to approach it with the mentality that i had when i was getting out of that you know what i mean yeah 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 
Yeah. And like, yeah, pandemic made it impossible for anybody to dodge that shit. It was like, yeah, you ever sat in your room for fucking a month straight or like not talk to people any, like, thank God I play video games straight up. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like if I didn't have games, I wouldn't be able to talk to like so many people, but mm-hmm. like at any hour of the day during the pandemic, I could open up discord and be like, Oh shit. Three homies. Boop, boop. Yeah, what up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it would take away that feeling of isolation, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's why all the zoom meetings started taking off because people needed something. And a yeah. lot of people don't have gaming because, yeah. you know, I was playing the whole, I, I've got to be honest, the first year of the pandemic, I was stoked. I was like, Oh, I get to Dude, shift, yeah. chill and play video games with my friends. <laughs> yeah. That was, it was funny. Like, so many of my friends like post pandemic i was like man the pandemic was too good to them dude like they got out of so many plans yeah it's like oh man i can't oh, make man. it tonight dude sorry man yeah, COVID. It's just too many people too many people man and i'm like yeah. oh dog we're gonna wear everybody's wearing masks and we're walking through a park please come and it's yeah. like dude yeah it's just still too risky you gotta see my parents in like a month so and I'm like, God damn, the pandemic was perfect for you. Some people it was like, yeah, no, I, I still, don't have to work. I like going out. I like going out and I like working. Yeah. But it was a nice, the first couple months was nice to be like, okay, this is that vacation that I needed that I hadn't taken because I've yeah. been working my ass off for 30 years or whatever it is. Right. You know, and then, but then like, you know, it, it happens every time when I do take an actual, like, I'm going to take a few days off. I realize, like, nope, I'm unhappy. Yeah. You're like, I, I need to do something. So, yeah, Give I'm, I'm going to book 17 podcasts today. You there know? you go. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just, uh, there's a weird feeling that uh, unproductive, uh, which I think comes with being an artist, you know, or being a creative person. Yeah. Uh, you know, I if you want to, if you ever been, like, if that's your life from when you were younger, like, you're you realize because that's the comfort of school, right? You go, I'm going to go become a lawyer. You know that you're going to be a lawyer and you're going to make money because lawyers make money. But yeah. when you're in arts, like there is no certainty there in terms of money, you know? Yeah. So it's that just hustle look towards the grind. Yeah. 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 It's interesting. Yeah. I mean, like, uh, it's definitely like, I, I think that if we decided to make a record, like, a year into the pandemic, it might not, you know, it wouldn't be the same for sure. Mm, yeah. Just cause your, your brain just morphed everybody's brain and their bodies just morphed during the pandemic of like this, this new way of living. And we had already planned to make that record at that point. So it was like, we came home from a tour because the pandemic said no more shows. Mm-hmm. And we hung out at home for like a month and a half. And then we went to make the record. So it was like kind of perfect, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, and, and, we had and that outlet still. You're you're gonna see now. We we went and saw. We got a lot of really good albums in the last yeah. year or so, mm-hmm. um, including yours. But that is all product of before pandemic or like right at the beginning. I think we're we're in store for like another wave of post pandemic yeah. music now. Right. It's like super exciting. It. it yeah it kind of like sucked for like, cause I looked at it. So you had to like categorize things. Cause there's like bands that were an artist that were like, damn, we literally have been waiting to roll out this record for a year. Mm -hmm. And then like March fit, you know, March, April, that's like the target date. Now it's, do you release music that's strictly going to be consumed online and no, in no other way Mm -hmm. or, do you wait three years and have people not hear from, or do you wait for an undetermined amount of time and have people just not know what the hell you're doing? You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's, it's, it was a toss up for so many, but some great records came out from it. And then you, you know that some people spent that pandemic just plugging away. I'm sure there's been, there were so many people that were like, wow, I haven't had the time to be home and try things, you know, and just like, do weird shit with my instrument or, or whatever my art is, you know? Yeah. We're going to get a lot of solo projects. Oh yeah. For sure. <laughs> They're like, coming out. <laughs> that was everybody's like, yeah, I, this, the second I, the pandemic started, I was like, right, let me get this Scarlet pro uh, <laughs> MIDI. And I, 
I installed that after like BSing every other time I ever recorded anything. I had to, I made the purchase and I was like, I'm doing stuff. So do you, so you, do you have a, like an album of uh, solo stuff? I, I have a ton of voice memos on my <laughs> okay. phone. All right. A ton of voice memos, but there's like this, the way, when the wave hits me, it's not enough to make me sit down for a really long time and like plug away trying to make a, a great quality version of it. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Um, and there's just so little time to like truly do it. And that, so that when I come home now, I'm like, man, need to detach and release sometimes and just go do things that are specifically for another part of my brain, you know? Yeah. 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 Like, like games. So, yeah. Games, <laughs> fucking sports. Like yeah. I, just, I have to do those things when I come back or else I feel kind of in the same groove and not, not like a whole human, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's also important to, you know, take a break from a specific thing because it could burn you out. It could start to feel like too much work. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that's not a good vibe, you know? Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like any music stuff has always felt good and I always want it to stay feeling good. So like if it ever came to a point where it was like, man, this is feeling a little worky, I'd be like, oh man, all right should we take a vacation? Mm-hmm. And I think, I feel like everybody in turnstile very specifically is like brain sharing. And we're all like, like when we decided in 2019, we were like, yeah, let's, we've been touring for a long ass time. Should we just chill for like a few months? Everybody was like, yes, <laughs> yes, 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 please. <laughs> we should do that. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm looking at your page. You've got a whole tour in Europe, winter yeah, and summer or winter, yeah. winter already passed. So summer, you got summer dates. Yeah. And, lots and lots of summer things coming up. And you have another tour up there, I see, with a bunch of bands, Citizen, Ceremony. Yeah. That's a lot of dates, too. The <laughs> So coming up, there's some South America dates, which we've never done before, and nice. that should be really cool. Oh, yeah. They love then, hardcore and metal down there, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. we're we, As soon as we announced it was Lollapalooza, the, Ooh, yeah. the messages came in of like, all right, that's cool, but like, we need a club show, like club show, club show, club show. So hopefully we can make one happen. But outside of that, got the whole U.S. tour. And then the summer is going to be like every festival that hasn't happened in three years. In We're Europe. Try to get to them. <laughs> yep. Lots of Europe. I saw one in France that's like three days and it's every single band ever. I forget what it's called, but I, I saw it. I was just like, that's just yeah. too much. Like, how is that Yeah, that's make how sense? it's going to feel. <laughs> yeah, there's so many where I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to see this person and this band at the next 10 festivals. Let's just run it and, and go through them all. Yeah. Yeah. So where are you, where are you staying right now? Like home? What's home for you? North New York? Uh, Baltimore. Baltimore. Okay. Yeah. Everybody in Turnstile now lives in this like three block radius in Baltimore. Nice. Where there's just, you know... Like I, I've lived in Baltimore for, for a while now and uh, everybody else was kind of Franz lived in Ohio and he moved out here a few years ago and then everybody else was in Maryland, but just like South of Baltimore, okay. they all moved up to Baltimore and now we're like in this pocket where we're just uh, go to the coffee shop. and like, all right, <laughs> see you later, you know, <laughs> but still like together every other day. So yeah. yeah. How's, pretty cool. how's the scene in Baltimore? I mean, in terms of music, live, like indie shows, it, it's kind of amazing, man. Like there was so many flip flops of where can you have shows? And there was this, like uh, this need for smaller venues that'll still have punk shows and then venues that can still handle a small crowd, but it sounds good. feels good. And, you know, hardcore shows, they, you know, and punk shows, they overstay their welcome so fast because you can trick a venue into being like, hey, so can we book a show here and it'll be cool? And then shit goes down one time and it gets out of hand. Mm. And then after that, they're vetting the shit out of every band. Like, all right, we got to watch a video and see how their performance is. <laughs> and no more hardcore bands come in there, you know? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. We, so yeah. there was like, there used to be, like everybody's favorite venue in Baltimore was Charm City Art Space. That was like the 250 maximum. And that's like people outside the, the door staring in the door. Like that was the spot. And when that closed, it was like, oh shit, well, what do we got? 
um, let's try around the corner. And around the corner was another spot, Metro Gallery and an auto bar. And they auto bars forever and ever like the staple. And mm. that will always host everybody. Like I saw, that's like my first stage dive venue. And at, at in 2003, like saw thrice and poison the well and Ooh. staged over at the show. I was like, this is the best place. And it's still hosting all of our friends bands, every touring band, they have like great people there. So as long as that place specifically is around, I think the, the Baltimore music scene as a whole is in great hands. Mm -hmm. Um, but everybody it's, it's very familial. You know what I mean? Like, like new bands start up all the time. The same bands will always be able to play. And then there's always like the venue area of like the hub of Baltimore where you can play in one of three or four places that you'll be able to get something cool out of it. You know? Yeah. That's awesome, man. Yeah. That's good I to hear. It. That's good to hear because I mean, in Florida, when I was there, we had Churchill's. It was kind of like our CBGBs. Yeah. 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 We've played Churchill's before. Dude, I think. Yeah. It's a shithole. Uh, bathrooms are all covered in graffiti and there's piss yeah. and shit everywhere. And the classic. Yeah. The, and you know, it was like Iggy pop would film videos there, music videos. <laughs> yeah shoot yeah man and i mean they also filmed porn there it was a it was an odd place but so it was a it, it was a a very uh utility based you could do anything in the venue huh oh yeah oh yeah but that was like the that i mean it's still there but they're they're kind of going through some kind of weird management issue but that was like the one venue that had that would let us play and would let us do yeah. shows you know uh and and keep the the door which was cool they just wanted bar sales yeah shit yeah so that was that's, that, like, that's the hub <laughs> right you need one of those no matter how like dude the 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 one i was saying before the art space the bathroom was like you you walk in the front door you go down some steps the stage is like 60 feet back that way hmm. halfway through that's the one toilet hmm. the one singular toilet and no matter what water I will say no matter what liquid was coming out from under the door <laughs> and like, you can just assume that it's just not always like the sink is just dripping or something, yeah, but yeah. that was like part of it. You know, the ground's always a little wet and then you have like your, your zone of where everything's happening and the bathroom's right behind it. And you're like, hopefully somebody doesn't blow it up. So you don't have the <laughs> stinky pit, but stinky you need like, pit. yeah, it's a, it's a humbling place to be no matter what it was you know yeah oh so where do you go to vacation because you're saying like sometimes you want to go on vacation what's your destination to get out of you know baltimore i mean it i think it depends because if it's me being like we're taking a vacation as baltimore people and not using touring as a way to like cheat code a vacation because <laughs> yeah. if that's the case like i'm going back to new zealand i'll play if we need to book two shows just to get back i'm down to do anything mm. in japan i will like every time we go to these places i'm gonna try to navigate be like okay so let me see if i can get like 10 days between the show and and getting there you know yeah but yeah. Maryland, it's very specifically Ocean City. It's like the coastal beach town. It's goddamn three hours away. But we've been taking day trips there. I mean, I've vacationed there since I was a baby, you know? Okay. okay. It's a nice level of like grimy, water trashy, like hillbilly Baltimore. Like the, Eastern like the Shore Florida people. Keys, right? I guess it would yes, be my dude. equivalent. <laughs> yeah. Like, when you go down and you're on the boardwalk on a Friday night and you're like looking at everything, you're like, Phew. yeah, man, <laughs> this is a place. Holy shit. It feels like some areas you're like, all right, so this whole section of this, the sand here, this is cigarettes. And then everything from the, that on is sick but right here. This is cigarette sand. This is sick. <laughs> but it's, you know, it's the spot. It's, yeah. it's got all the stuff. It's got the personality. Got the, yeah, uh, I think everybody surround like Virginia Beach people are Virginia Beach people, but above that is like we go to Ocean City, man, Ocean City, Maryland, and it's like trashy paradise. Okay, all right, yeah. I'll keep that in mind for my visits. Yeah, <laughs> I, you know, I don't want to hype it up because I think you know all of us like 
every time we yeah, stop bring giving somebody away your there, secrets, man. People are going to start showing up. Yeah. <laughs> no, they're going to be like, oh, what the fuck is this place sucks? Oh, uh, my God. And I'll be like, no, no, no. You Let's don't understand, this place. bro. Yeah. And they're like this dirty like sub shop. And I'm like, but it's the it best. is good. It's the Let's best play sub. mini golf. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, I, I love that, man. Yeah. You can't really. You know, I can't really recommend Churchill's to anyone. Like, yeah, you, know? you, you got to warm it up and be like, eh, but it's it's in the hood. Don't your, go. your car will get broken into. And uh, there is a guy yeah. walking around. If you give him five bucks, he's the one that's breaking into the cars. You give he'll him you five bucks. <laughs> yeah. And he'll protect your car he'll, from himself. Yeah. You know, Yep. <laughs> it's a deal. You got to make the deals around. Them spots, yeah, man. man. Uh, so you mentioned video games. What are you playing? Um, recent, I just, I've been like very slowly grinding Elden Ring with, mm. and my, some of my buddies are like, just like Elden Ring, just mega fans already. So they're like 90 hours in and being <laughs> like, oh, which boss are you fighting? Oh yeah, that's cool, man. Can you stream it so that we can watch? And I'm like, uh, you want to watch me die 50 times? All right, fuck it, man. I suck. Like, I think I have like three or four hours in the game okay. but uh it's been fun um but that and and me and dan plays drums and turnstile we've been playing a lot of league of legends which we had been moba guys for a while and we had been uh heroes of the storm guys wow, playing okay. the blizzard moba and that kind of just started just and lost a lot of steam and lost funding and we were like well shit i guess we'll try a league and he he got in hard, and I was like, oh, I don't want to learn a new one. And, but watching him play it so much, I was like, fuck it, all right, I'll play. And then I was like, wait, all the characters in Heroes of the Storm are just rips of these. Okay, fuck, I, I know every character already. Okay, let's go. Yeah, you know, yeah. League League came first, so I mean, yeah. technically, it's weird that you started with Heroes because that's yeah, you know, for MOBA people, it's always League. And I I tried, and I suck at it so bad. I can't do yeah, it. Dude, I, I, <laughs> I think it was a social thing for probably a year and a half before I was like, okay, wait, I, I'm not bad at the game. Hmm. Like for so long, I was like, I just want to chill with my friend. And even now I don't play league. I, I think like 1% of the time I play it alone. Hmm. It's very strictly like, a, okay, I see people get on, I'm gonna get on. But uh, like so much of it was just learning, which is like brutal. So with getting introduced to heroes of the storm and MOBAs in general, I was like, okay, I'm just hanging out with Dan and my other really good friends, Jeff and my cousin, we were like just chilling basically. And I sucked and me and Dan sucked so, so bad for like a full year. And it was never like a, God damn, we don't want to play with these guys. They fucking suck. They're so shitty at this game. It was just like a, who cares? We're just hanging out. Yeah. And eventually now we're like, <laughs> we're going left, going left. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like, if, if the dude comes in, that sucks. I'm like, I want to help you get better, but man, you, you really make us lose every time. Shit. You I know? have, I have a buddy like that in uh war zone that we play, you know, it's usually I do three players, but every once in a while that fourth guy you shows up fourth. Yeah. and he's just the worst. And we're like, all right, where are you? He's like, um, I don't know. I'm over here somewhere. I'm like, great. You're like, yeah, just look at the, the I, I dabble with Warzone. I have like two friends who still play Warzone and they're both kind of in like father hours. You know what I mean? Mm. Like they get home from work and they're like, you want to play? And I'm like, man, it's like five. I got shit to do now. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like I get on with them sometimes between like six and eight, nine. And it's funny because the one dude is like, this is his first console. Like he has never played shooters before. Oh, nice. And he's he loves playing but he's fucking bad and <laughs> yeah. i just have fully adjusted that i'm like when we're playing strictly chilling winning yeah. does not matter nope. and i play the game not to win i'm literally like yo dude there's there's guys shooting here let's sprint up at it or let's just try and launch this car off the cliff and like blast in and we'll see if we get kills and i'm i'm good at warzone like i'll be I, i'll get <laughs> kills for him but he's He's there with me, and we're just like, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. No yeah, sometimes yeah, you just have fun. That's what it's about, you know? Sometimes yeah. if you can turn it up for a competition or something like that, you know, yeah. get, get serious, that's fun. But Dude, I, I get... Competitions? Uh, yeah. No? you're that's, not what, that's the humbling part. That's when I'm like, I am not good, actually. I have good <laughs> games, but I'm fucking bad. Yeah. You know what game I'm actually decent at, which I wasn't expecting to be decent at, and I, to the point where I've done online tournaments and won... The uh, Rocket League. I wasn't. Dude, never thought I, I'd be good at it. <laughs> I was just about to bring that up because I, I Rocket League was a pandemic game too. I was like, mm. "Fuck it, I'm gonna get into Rocket League with you guys." There was like two or three of my friends who were like, "We're diamond. We're good as hell. We like we play every day." And I was like, "All right, well." And me and my cousin, we were like, "Let's go for it. Let's get on." And come out the gates just so so bad. Learning curve is massive. Yeah, but uh. At the end of it, you know, after like a year or so, we're diamond too. And we're like, yeah, look, we're diamond players. We're the same as these guys now. I'm very much not. And I've been carried there clearly. But <laughs> there's this uh, convention, this like thing that happens every year. It's in DC. It's called MAGFest. It's a music and gaming festival. Oh, nice. And they take over all these halls in a huge hotel that's a convention center. They dominate the entire place. There's like one hall that's console games. There's another hall that's like rhythm games. There's another hall that's, you know, indie games and they have tournaments. And I thought I was hot shit at Rocket League being like, I'm diamond, dude. What's good? <laughs> First round, we just destroyed these guys like six to zero, two games in a row, just like beat them. I was scoring. I nice. was like, damn, we're, and there was only like 10 teams. And I was like, yo, we're about to smack this team up like this whole competition we're at the win oh shit and this is like in person like next to these guys and i was like trying so hard not to talk shit and be like damn what's good but like we win <laughs> second game you can see the people's rank when they jump in fucking uh what's the ultimate one champion yeah i think so grand I champion it, i forget what it is grand champion i yeah these guys were like the top they had a number next to their name that was like i'm that fucking good and i was like oh. <laughs> and lost four games like literally lost two games to those guys instantly put in the losers bracket lost to the dudes in the losers bracket who were also grand champion and i was nice. like all right i'm bad at rocket league <laughs> you're not I'm bad, bad. you league. made it you did it you yeah know, you, did. you went to the tournament i mean exactly you know you got my one win you got your win that's fine yeah. it happens you know? Yeah, I, I don't. I've I've never done like a full on tournament for that, but I feel I do the online ranked matches. Yeah, and yeah. It's, You know, I'm pretty decent at it, and um, also fighting games, old fighting games. I'm pretty. Solid oh, dude. At. <laughs> I I kind of like fighting games. There's also like a couple of my friends who like I'm like my one great friend since like middle school. He's so into them. He's like embedded in the like FGC all over like the area here. He goes to all the competitions. And uh, he was like a Soul Calibur dude. Oh, uh, he he got into like all the other ones, but he's a Soul Calibur dude. And he built like a bot, like a Discord bot, to show you like your frame stats, like to help you close the frames down. And he was like, Jeez. so good and so dug into these games that I was always like, man, I don't, I don't even want to touch him because I, I can't, I can't stand him. For even one millisecond i know it's just it's too high of a hill to climb <laughs> i'm not here for it yeah but i support him doing it and i like to play him every now and then and just get destroyed and talk shit but they're hard dude there's people that that's their you know they they break the code they know they know what's up you know oh yeah uh, some smashing people... these fucking yeah. pads and stuff like crazy good hey some people do it with music you know they break the code they know how to you know, look at toes and, and animals as leaders when i watch that i'm like i, I don't even want to listen to music anymore because what's the point yeah what yeah. do i do yeah. <laughs> i don't know what i'm playing anymore but yeah, yeah dude. It's, it's it's you can't let that happen it can't you can't uh let that kind of talent like uh make you feel bad about yours you know yeah, yeah. i, I think if if uh if it drove me enough i i would i would want it i would want the fighting games to be stronger for me but it it's different in something i guess that i truly 
you know, music, I, I can't, you know, I would never stop. I, I look next to me and I'm like, damn, I'm the worst guitar player in the room. That's all good. I'm still <laughs> doing it and I feel good about it. So, yeah. but fighting games, man, if I get beat 20 times in a row, I'm like, all right, Fuck it. controller, <laughs> we're done. We're done playing. That was my big issue in uh, high school and stuff. I was, I was really good at Mortal Kombat and, and like Marvel Oof. versus Capcom. Yeah. And, uh, my friends never wanted to play and I'm just like, I don't want to play alone. That's stupid. yeah. And I'm like, like, come on, man. I'll, I'll lose. They're like, no, we don't want your pity. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't want you taking it easy on me. I want you to <laughs> fuck me up until I figure something out. Yeah. yeah. But you know, that's, yeah. those are one of the few games that I, there's a lot of other games I suck at. So I'm not just trying to be like, you know, I'm, yeah. a, I'm a, the best. No, my, <laughs> my steam library is full of games that I suck at, but, I only talked about the games that I, uh, I'm like, all right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm all right. All right. Um, we usually go for an hour past the hour, but, uh, you know, I feel like we can talk forever, but I do want to ask yeah. one final, uh, prediction question. I mean, do you care about what's happening at WrestleMania? I'm, I'm pretty in the dark with most WWE things, but okay, so what are you in AEW? I, I'm kind of just like, I'm seeing more AEW stuff okay. now than WWE stuff, but do you got the card in front of you, the WWE, the match card? I mean, I was just going to ask for the main event, which is Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns are going to unify the two titles. Uh, so Shit. I don't know. I mean, something tells me it's Roman, but yeah, I, I mean, he, it, it, you know, with WWE, absolutely any millisecond the idea can change and then just fuck it like roman could come out and people are like hell yeah boo and then all of a sudden like 10 minutes into the match they're kind of cheering and vince is like Switch roman's up. winning now Man. yeah you know i i'm i'm with you I, i'll always i think i have to bet on roman reigns especially if brock lesnar's kind of because he's been back for a little bit now right yeah he doesn't stay that long no, and no. you know he's getting a little older. You can see it, yeah. you know. And this is Roman's time to cement that legacy of like he's the good, the guy. He's the goat. Yeah, you know what I mean, I'm so, he I'm hearing the rumors of you know Cody? Cody coming to fight Seth. I don't know. It's it's eleven here, so it could have been announced already. But... Right. I was watching Raw before we started talking, and then, yeah, uh, the rumor was that he was going to show up at the end of Raw, but I don't know if it happened or not. Well, I guess we'll see. You know. I hope he does. I hope it just adds more, more wrenches thrown, you know? Yeah. Might it's excitement. Well. And you know, if he can, like I told some, some of my friends, if you, if he comes in as the AEW guy, like make, yeah. make that the gimmick. Right. I came from the other company. I owned it. I owned it. I've made it successful. And now yeah. I'm here to fix WWE because WWE has a problem or whatever, you know, and that's his, right. I'm in. <laughs> yeah. Don't come back as anything else. Come back as like cocky. You imagine he comes back as guy. Stardust. <laughs> oh my God. Dude. I was, I remember it, it must, it was kind of, you know, an ironic liking, but I loved that shit, man. Oh, I was yeah. like, so at that point I was so dug into wrestling that like I could almost find joy in any character. Yeah. And I was and, watching the arrow. So when he did that whole story arc with, the, yeah. the guy from the arrows all and in. the dude was good yeah he's good he's got a show now uh the heels or something yeah it's pretty yeah decent. i haven't watched it but i saw he just has a, a tv show it's good okay. but it's depressing yeah it's, it's a whole wrestling nothing style. good ever happens in the show yeah. and my wife tells me she's like, why do you watch shows where nothing <laughs> good ever happens i'm like i, I don't makes know makes me feel good about me yeah uh, my life is so much better than that <laughs> yeah <laughs> well hey man uh i appreciate you sitting down with me, taking like an yeah. hour to nerd out with me, dude. Yeah, uh, I w I'm glad you brought up wrestling so fast because I, I I'll always talk about wrestling and video games and all that stuff. I try with the podcast to you know I, a lot of times you know you and I just connected on online, but like I, yeah. I get a lot of people from PR people, and they're like, yeah. you got to talk about the album, and I'm just like, ah, uh, I don't really. I mean, they're doing that with everyone. Yeah, you know, like you're gonna I like do, doing this. You do a million interviews about the album. It, I I bring it up because I do love the music. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
Uh, but yeah, I appreciate you. I appreciate what you're doing. I hope you guys uh, can. I can you put a word in and just repress that record at some point? So oh I, yeah. It, so I don't spend three hundred dollars on, on eBay. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Do not buy a resale. Okay. Uh, yeah. Appreciate you having me for sure. It was a, a good time. Um, and where where are you at now? I'm in L.A. I'm in L.A. Okay, so. Yeah. We're gonna be there in a for Coachella around Coachella, but uh, you know, we will get together, man. Yeah, let's hang out. I'll I'll take you to the comedy store. We'll watch. Uh, we'll, oh you know, yeah, yeah. I have a I have a show at the comedy store, so I can just whenever you guys want to come in. That'd be sick, you. man. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, dude. Uh, so for everyone that is watching and listening, please pick up Glow On if you haven't from Turnstile. Follow them on the socials. It is Turnstile Love Connection. And Pat, do you want people following your your personal thing? Is it private? No, it's not private. It's Pat WK, man. Pat WK on IG. Is that from Andrew WK? Yep. It's, yeah. It was literally like my MySpace name in 2007 and I just, whatever. Have you played, with, have you played a show with him yet? I, I mean, he's been on like Bills. I was super psyched because he was supposed to play Furnace Fest mm. with us. And then he, he, had, uh, he couldn't play it. And we took his slot and I was like, damn damn i just wanted to see andrew wk i didn't want to play the the end of this stage shit but still have you met him the, no i haven't met him dude so i know we, we were about to say goodbye but there's a quick story i did yeah. a psycho las vegas um they brought me on to do interviews yeah and they you know at one point they're like okay well andrew wk is coming in i'm like what <laughs> he's like yeah. walks in with a pizza guitar <laughs> oh shit let's go yeah dude it was so great he's the best and then that night he dj'd at psycho in the lobby of the hotel all night just playing Damn. playing metal and like death metal and stuff I'm like, oh, yeah nice. okay dude legend man legend. legend legendary guy but anyway uh dude again thank you let's connect uh yeah hang sure. out for sure cheers everyone